love me, first love yourself. For that, and God we trust. Trust me, I don't trust myself. Your jewelry, I get it took. No show, I. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. Shout out to our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. You can support the show by hitting the link in the description and downloading the Underdog Fantasy app. It's the easiest way to make money on sports. You make the picks on your favorite players and they will match your first deposit up to $100 and you get a special pick when you sign up. As you know, I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your host, Camp and Mate. Murder, what up? What's good, killer? Let's What's good, go. good, man? Still got your receivers on defense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Ed McMahon <laughs> instead of Jim McMahon. <laughs> hey, yo, I'm real, trolling. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely trolling. I'm trolling because you know why? I'm going to keep it 100. I'm going to keep it 100. I've, ever since I caught the water, they've been heating me up. <laughs> they've been heating me up. They says it's pours of the year so far. So I'm a little bit upset about that. So I'm going to be looking. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm going to be looking for stupid shit, little petty shit, until I get back yeah. even, man. Yo, real quick, man. We want to thank all the viewers for tuning in every day. Yep. You know, we had over... A quarter million people uh, looking at the show, but y'all gotta hit that subscribe button. It's free, man. Yeah. Make sure y'all hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel, and we appreciate all the love that y'all been giving us, man. Yeah, we definitely do, and make sure you guys hit subscribe. Okay, so Pat McAfee is making his ESPN debut for his show, but according to Wall Street Journal, ESPN will broadcast his show on a tape delay to avoid any F bombs, which is a pretty interesting decision. So, what do mm -hmm. you guys think about? Let me go. <laughs> yeah. I think Pat laid the Lord there on pause. <laughs> I think Pat said, look, if y'all want me to come on ESPN, y'all yeah. not going to have me not be myself. That's just that. I'm going to do what I do on my podcast. Y'all need to figure out the technology on how it needs to be done because I'm not going to not be me. And I think ESPN was like, okay, whatever we you need. The I, we need the numbers. So yeah. I think that this is their way of still having them on the show without him compromising his brand, if you ask me. Yeah, and no, I appreciate it every time, agreeing with Killer on what he's saying, every time that a person stand their ground, they get to see what the companies would do for that corporate, um, the corporate sponsorship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like, look, end of the day, like, having Aaron Rodgers every week for however long he had was definitely – asset so you know he's probably the ESPN is thinking if he could get Aaron yeah who else could you get on the show which yeah. are, which will produce numbers like you just said but I think the biggest thing is it's like I seen on uh, Stephen A. Smith on his podcast talking about it how Pat Mac Pat McAfee isn't an employee of ESPN he's a uh um I forget the exact word he partner he it's a part it wasn't a partner it was a um analyst it wasn't an analyst. It's all it's an acquisition. Yeah. It's an acquisition to where they're like, we're buying your brand and to work with us. And Stephen A said, the reason I know that, because I'm an employee trying to do the same thing he's doing. Not saying Stephen A isn't doing a million different things. It's just something yeah. I heard him say on his podcast. So mm -hmm. Pat McAfee laid the law down. Yeah. I don't work for y'all like that. This shit is going the way it been going. And if y'all want to fuck with me, I'm not going to stop cursing or doing whatever I want to do. Yeah. So when y'all figure out what the fuck y'all got going on, you let me know. Yeah, press tape delay if you have to. Do whatever you got to do. Talk to whoever you want to talk to, but I'm going to be Pat. That's right. That's why I take it that whole situation. Yeah. Right. It's definitely a new era. Okay, so at USC, there's no doubt Caleb Williams is a star. But it seems like this star wants more leverage on his future. Caleb Williams' dad shared that there's no guarantee the USC quarterback will declare for the draft because of the team that has the first draft pick. He said, the funky thing about the NFL draft process is he'd almost be better off not being drafted than being drafted first. He added, the system is backwards because you go to the worst possible situation. Do you agree with this statement? I mean, absolutely. See, there's two ways to look at that. Just I'm not, I'm not talking about um, Williams' father. I always say his last name because I always have him with mispronounce his first name but it's that's kind of a catch-22 because you can't go to the best team <laughs> and being the first pick and then you don't really want to go to a team and not saying you don't all these things I'm saying is not fair mm -hmm. but it's definitely not fair also to go to the worst team now what I do like is that that at least in the NBA you in a lottery so you may not <laughs> go, seriously like you may not go to the very worst team but you're going to go to one of the worst yeah teams. one of them football the first pick is going to the worst 
team no matter what. So I think the NBA has a little better system and it's kind of fucked up for all the people that you know are going to go number one because you're going to go to the worst team. Um, so I dig what his father's saying. But if he stays healthy for another year and he still plays good, you're still going to be the number one pick the following year. <laughs> you're still year. going to the worst team going, next year. Yeah, you're still going to the worst team next year. So they're not going to change that rule by the time he gets out of college. So I dig it if he wants to stay another year or so because he's going to go to the worst team. But you're eventually going to go to one of the worst teams unless your stock drops. Secondly, yeah. they get money in college now. Yeah. It isn't like they That's need. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, they, it ain't like they need the money right now to – Go to the NFL. You know they'd be like, man, I need this bread. I got to go to the NFL. Right now, I don't know much how, how much Caleb Williams is making, but he's probably making a good amount of money that his father's like. And yeah. I don't know their financial background. You know, we're in a new day and age to where uh, parents, especially fathers, are taking care of their kids. You know, we grew up in the era of me and Mason talking about where if you had your father in the house, you was a lucky ass <laughs> you nigga. You was an Olympian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. If you had a dad. Yeah, if, you had a, if you had your dad in the house, you was an Olympian. I like that phrase. And then on top of that, it's like you needed the money. A lot of yeah. these, you know, so we, we're um, being, and the, and the one thing that I will say about everybody that I grew up with is that everybody is tremendous dads because we all had no real fathers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We all tremendous dads. I'm talking about you know, you just dropped your kids off at college. My son went to college. Even if they're not in college, they're a big part of their kids' life. Like, I don't even fuck with no, yeah. no, no niggas that I know with that's deadbeat dads. Everybody I know fuck with their kids. You know what I'm saying? That's important to me because we all grew up with our kids. I mean, part of me with our fathers. So I dig that with his father saying, and that either his father been well off coming up and the family been well off, or they getting money now. Yeah. I think they're making so much money, they just waiting for the right city. They know they're going to go to the wrong team. I meant the worst team, but at least it could be in a good city. Right, and the thing about it is, from what I'm understanding, I may not have the exact knowledge on when you have to declare for the draft, but mm -hmm. he's saying, let me see who got the first pick, and then we'll let <laughs> yeah. you know what we're going to do. Because it's still yeah. not ruled out that he go to the NFL. He's just saying, let yeah. me see what's popping, and then we'll let you know what we're going to do. Yeah. You're right about that. The niggas yeah. want to see what city. Yeah, so what basically, city. No, basically, niggas like, and no disrespect to no city because everybody will get offended if you say the wrong city or whatever. So, But I, you know if the worst team was Miami, you don't mind coming out. Right. Or Houston. If, if yeah. If Pop might like the strippers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? James Harden trying to get back to Houston. No one ain't going to win. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, absolutely right. That's a great point. Yeah. Okay. So Tom Brady has been living life and now he's ready to pass his love of football on to his son. But his son explained that he wouldn't want to play quarterback. He wants to play tight end. He said, I want to be like Gronk. What do you think about this? Oh, man. Camera, put the camera right here. When I think about kids today, it's amazing how they want to be everybody but their dad. I think it's a curse wow. when people wow. don't want to be like their dad. I watched that with, with um, Shaquille O'Neal's son. He wanted to be Kobe. Or, you know, you could just go down the list of kids, and I, I fool with Shaq, I fool with the family, but I think it's a real curse to not try to be like your dad, especially if your dad is great. Yeah. Listen, I'll give you – that's a great point. I you know my son in his bio on his Instagram page says, <laughs> I'm not from Harlem and I can't help you get a record deal. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'll go in the gym. And my son will be downstairs working out. I come in, he got, he sleep, look at me, roll his eyes and go upstairs. I go upstairs, I say, he, he'll leave. I say, I will get home, I say, yo, what's up? He said, I don't need everybody being my friend because you my father and all that <laughs> shit, man. You know what I'm I say, yo, my nigga, like, you know I'm some cool nigga, right? You know I'm some extra, like, fly, cool nigga, right? I talk to this nigga like this. Like, you know, I'm some fly nah. nigga. Like, nah, so the nigga, like, so he um he went out with my man British. Um, shout out to British. What's up? Yeah. So my son is like, you know, he works out, eats good, real healthy, you know. And so, you know, I fuck with that nigga. I'd be like, yeah. yo, you want to get some hookers? You want, yo, let's get some <laughs> pussy. You know, he, he, he'll be like, get the, yo, get out of here, my nigga. <laughs> so my man took him out to get on his 21st birthday and he drank some wine. So I'm like, he come back home, not the same day. And I'm like, 
oh, you was drinking with niggas? I offer you a little drink. You can't <laughs> fucking drink with me. He's like, he's not my father. I said, but I'm cool. He said, yeah, but he's not my father. So just to add on to your point, kids are trying. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Certain kids are like, look, I love my parents. I fuck with them, but I want to have my own identity. And I respect that as yeah. well. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, that's crazy. That's the same thing happened with me and my son. My son loves me like tremendously. But right. when it was time to take him to college, he was like, where you going? I said, what do you mean where I'm going? Yeah. He said, I don't want everybody to see you when I walk on campus. <laughs> I'm like, so where do I stand? <laughs> My money goes, but, but I stay in the car. Yeah, like, yeah, <laughs> he like, said, I, don't, I want people to meet me first. <laughs> I was like, man, all right. Yeah, same shit. Same shit. Like, <laughs> My son has the same name as me. So, you know, like when he gets to high school, like ninth, eighth grade, I believe it was. It was even eighth or ninth grade. But they was like, hey, yo, um, is your father the rapper Cameron? Now, mind you, we got the same name. He like, nah. <laughs> yeah. like, he's like, oh, yeah, what's your father do? He said, my, my father owns two Macy's in the mall. <laughs> he's not going to be able to keep that love right I said, there. Macy's? How'd you come to Macy's in the mall? And I said, yo, you know we look alike and you got the same exact name. Soon you might as well tell him you still believe in Santa Claus. Just, yeah, just, just, just keep the just, lie going. Yeah, just run with it. You know what's even crazier? Now I'm really thinking about this and forgot what the fuck the question was. Yo, what was the original <laughs> question and shit? Um, about Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah we gotta Brady's get back to Tom that Brady. Brady. To like, like, in How old is Tom Brady's son, first of all? That's the question uh, I would I like. Think, like 12, 13? Yeah, I mean, if, if you're, look, you gotta think about like this if you're Tom Brady's son, right? Uncle Gronk come to the crib, he fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. He like, oh, you open the door for Gronk, he might do a front tuck into yeah. the house. He's a fun nigga, pause. So at the end of the day, it's like, yo, man, I, I want to learn from this nigga like you all. Yeah, because he's still having fun, he's pause still, with it. Yeah, he's, you could tell anything yeah. he do, he having mad fun. So to Tom Brady's 12, 13 year old son, however, however old he is, it seems like more fun to hang out with Uncle Gronk and learn shit from yeah. Uncle Gronk. As opposed to saying, my dad was the best quarterback ever. Yeah. <laughs> Arguably. And, and if he plays that position, Pauls, he definitely have to do super studying all the time. Yeah. You don't have to do that to play I mean, grunk position. Right. But you know, you know what's crazy? Like, they see that's a family right there that you, not Tom Brady family, the Manning family. Yeah, got Archie man and the yeah. fuck the father. <laughs> yeah. That nigga Eli, Eli. follow suit. Yeah. Peyton Manning since follow suit. Now there's another brother that they have where their son is like the number one high school. He's getting mad money he too. Playing his quarterback. Yes, he, he has play? to play. Yeah. Quarterback. That's yeah. what I would think if you're if you if you um Brady's son. Right. Everybody's gonna try to put you at quarterback. But you know, but see, what I'm trying to say is a difference to where Tom Brady's fighting for it for him. You got granddad, you got dad, yeah. you got two uncles yeah. saying you got to play quarterback. <laughs> you know don't come in here yeah, talking about yeah, you on special yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah, you better, it's over we'll for you. smack dog shit out you. <laughs> nigga, you talking about you a punt returning. Nigga, fuck is you talking about? And not only that, I believe, this was last year I was looking at it. I don't know where it's at now, but he was like either first and second in NIL money. Yeah. Coming out of high school. Wow. Yeah, he was getting, he was getting paper, paper. And you know what's even crazier? He don't need it. <laughs> Look, yeah. You know, he don't even need the shit. He's number one right now. Bub, see, Bub did the research while I was talking about. He's the number one in high school still. He about to go. This is first year though, right? Yeah. Last, but wow. he, last year in high school, he was number one, and he's still number one, confirmed by Bub, NIL player. Yeah. And that's that was that's where you want to be number one, pause, in the money. Right. For a nigga who don't even need it. <laughs> Goddamn shame, man. Yeah. But I also got to add in Tom Brady's son's position, I wouldn't want to be quarterback either because if my dad is the greatest ever and I'm not good, that's too much pressure because then people looking at you like, oh, so your dad the best and look at, and you not good, then what? Then you stuck. Then you Michael Jordan's son. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. Go, work, go fucking you work get TV lost 12. To yeah, yeah. <laughs> If all fails, <laughs> if you all get lost, lost to Pippen. Pippen. <laughs> I don't think that's a bad, <laughs> yeah. a bad deal. That's not a bad deal, but not only that, he runs <laughs> yeah. the Jordan brand. That's what I'm I saying. I mean, there'll be a job for him somewhere. He runs TB12 <laughs> and all that fly shit. But listen, man, if, if you had that, I, I agree with what you're saying too, so that's a lot of pressure. 
But look, I just named a family where the person is at. Like, look, I didn't know till Bub was telling me that Dion, when he got to Colorado, yeah. that was Hasselback's son. He told him, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> he was the quarterback, and he said, you want one game, homie? You don't have to get the fuck up out of here. <laughs> and they you no, know, he has a father and a uncle that both play that's quarterback. Probably, that's probably why the money was slowed up. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why. <laughs> but when it's making one, sense now. Yeah, but winning one game ain't going to help neither. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so on the topic of football, that brings us to our underdog fantasy picks of the day. The Cincinnati Bengals will play the Cleveland Browns Sunday, September 10th. Underdog Fantasy has Jamar Chase at half receiving touchdowns. Do you have him higher or lower? Higher? I think I think they're just giving the money away. These underdog are like Yeah, underdog is just giving the money away, man. Go to underdog. Y'all better, yeah, y'all better go to underdog and go to underdog down. right now. <laughs> Cause nigga, I got a thousand on that. <laughs> Higher, 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 definitely okay. higher. Underdog Fantasy has T. Higgins at 4.5 receptions. Do you have him higher or lower? Let Cam go. I'm going to go with his pick. I'm going to go his. lower. Pause. Yesterday you said when we do this segment. Yesterday he said when we do this segment. You on a roll. No, you Pause. said, didn't he say? Okay, see, yeah, 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 you're yo, right. Stat, did he All say right. when we do this shit that this is wild, man? Lower, lower. You're a wild nigga, man. I, I'm not feeding into you. Because you know what somebody pointed out to me? I was reading the comments. You know what somebody pointed out to me? <laughs> what did they say? Whoever that was, I'm on point now. Thank you. They say, when Cam making a good, good point, murder throw him off with a pause moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every time I'm doing something, I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Because this is what they said to me. <laughs> I see that. So I'm not feeding into it, especially they said, if it's they not said, a point. They said, um, <laughs> killer thinks your glasses make you intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> so he went and got him a fresh pair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, yeah. man. I got medicine in mind. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I got medicine in mind, man. That's so, crazy, too. You got medicine in yours. You know. that, you yeah. Is yeah. that yeah. reaching, Bob? <laughs> yeah, Keep it right. You reaching, bro. Yeah. But, that's, 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 yo, you about to get fired. For for speculation at this point, bro. But, but yeah, yeah, Florida versus Ohio. Look, see, I try Keep to spin, spin, master. Spin, okay. spin master. Spin it Florida versus Ohio. And then on the Brown side, they have Deshaun Watson at 228.5 passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower? How many yards? 228.5. I'm going to go higher. I think he's coming out here to make a statement. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't played for over a year. Um, he should he should be um, recouped off them hand jobs, pause, <laughs> and fired up. No pause. <laughs> I, was about to say, I was about to say the other thing we said. Yeah. So I think all jokes aside, I think he's ready to go. He got a point to prove. Um, and uh, he has, like I said, he hasn't played in a while. He's dumb nice, you know. When he's in Texans. He was he was stupid nice, and he's had spent enough time so far with his receivers that they should be on point. But so I'm gonna go higher. Higher. Download the Underdog Fantasy app and you can make your picks as well. When we return, we'll be right back with our special guest. She called this thing about us toxic. Four years and counting. Got you feeling like an option. Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know What's stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Why am I in this one? She wanna be free I wish somebody told me the rules. Disagreements let her win, then it's cool. Even when I'm right, this ain't about you. Welcome back. Today we are joined by our special guest, Maurice Claret. He was a running back for the Ohio State Buckeyes and was drafted to the Broncos in 2005. Welcome to the show. Yeah, nigga. Yeah. I got back up today, boy. Florida versus Ohio. Up today, nigga. I got back up today. Bro, what up, baby? Ohio in the house, nigga. What's good? What's good, Columbus? What's shaking, man? What's shaking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, y
What's up, man? Let's man go. Thank you for being here today, man. We appreciate it, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, thank you for having me. Oh uh, man, we look forward to having you. Know so a lot of people don't know. Um, Mo's going to be our college football expert moving forward. Not just that, add so much more to the show, and we appreciate you bringing here for the first week with us. Yeah, thanks. Oh, uh, thank you for having me, bro. Cool, man. So let's set it off. We're going to get straight into it. Okay, college sports just continues to expand in different ways every week, every year. But when you think of all the athletes who've made an impact, who are your top five favorite college athletes of all time? Oh, I, I can give you my favorite uh, football players uh, real quick. Well, we're going. We're, we're, we're one, talking about football, so so we should have we should have specified that yeah. question. Top five uh, college football players of all time. Yeah, my one. Uh, it will surprise some people, but people who had an impact uh, from what I've seen. Uh, Lavar Arrington, uh, when he played for Penn State, you know, dude was dominant. Uh, somebody who was six seven, two fifty at the time, jumping over. Uh, you know, players, it was uh, unseen at the time that he was doing that. Uh, but he was like a, a very dynamic um, uh, individual for the linebacker position. Number two, I would have uh, Mike Vick in no particular order, but these are just people I thought of. I would have Mike Vick. Mike Vick was definitely somebody who was super dominant um, at the quarterback position. I don't think that we have seen what he had to offer at the time that he came through in college at Virginia Tech. Uh, just explosive, elusive, and then just his swag on the field. I uh, was like none other. Uh, number three, I got Ricky Williams. Uh, when he was down there in Texas, he was getting busy. He had broke the um, the all-time college rushing record. And Ron Day ended up breaking it the next year. Uh, but just the impact that he had on the game down there in Texas was crazy. Uh, my fourth guy uh, was Julius Peppers when he was down in, uh, um, what is it called, the University of North Carolina. Uh, once again, he was like a, a slimmer built dude because he had uh, played basketball as well. So he was built more like a basketball player. And just was super athletic, you know, playing against guys at the University of North Carolina. And at that time, North Carolina wasn't known for putting out people. They had Lawrence Taylor back in the day. But, you know, when he was doing his thing, he wasn't just known for uh, for churning out players. And my last guy is uh, Adrian Peterson. Uh, just the, he was a dominant force, you know, even when he went to the Vikings in the NFL shortly after. But from his freshman year in college until, you know, he left the Minnesota Vikings, you know, the dude had been dominant. So, uh, those are my top five are just dudes who I, uh, you know, had a bunch of respect for how I enjoyed watching, but you know, nothing more, nothing less. It's, it's, it's not like I'm slighting anybody, but those are just my guys. You ain't got to come yeah. up here and cop no plea. Don't come up here and start copying yeah, no plea. Yeah, you need to cop a <laughs> plea. Nah, There's nah. Florida in the house. Yo, listen, your picks is your picks, man. Let listen. me give you my picks. Go ahead. Number one, Tim Tebow. Florida in the house. <laughs> he know he he know when he looking at the husbands how to carry himself. You know. Then my second one, I gotta go back to Florida again. We gonna go with Peter Ward, second. Then we gonna go with Ed Reed, U of M, Florida in the house. All I got is Florida. All I got is Florida. It's Florida or is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he going too far, right. and then I and then I want to take it to Florida State with Charlie Ward, even though he was a horrible NBA player, you great football picks. player. <laughs> I thought he should have went with football. He should have listened to his parents, you know. And then I'm gonna end with Littles, fam. You, fam, you in the house. Come on, how does my picks look? I ain't gonna Come lie. on, Claret, tell me how my picks look. No, no, no. All Florida, well, you, tell you me how my wrong. picks look. I ain't going to front. I got Tim oh, Tebow got on my list. <laughs> 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 I ain't going to yeah. lie. I got Tim Tebow. Yeah. I ain't going to lie. I got Tim Tebow. Listen, yeah. so I'm not in depth uh, um, with college football as I am with NFL. So my picks are basically basically off the bowl games I see yeah, yeah, or what yeah. ESPN <laughs> talked about. Now, I'm keeping it a buck. I ain't going to sit and act like I got a lot of depth on college football. But, but my picks are Tim Tebow. Yeah. Vince Young. Ooh. Barry Sanders. Randy Morse. And Herschel Walker. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, but I, You I, ain't have Claret in your 
I mean, my, my man, you know what he was doing out there. You know, he turned his life around, man. He went up and up there. You no, know, my man was out there. You know, he was on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was definitely on the yeah, way. He was on the yeah, way. He's definitely on his listen, way. Listen, man, that's why we connected. That's why we turned our shit around. You know, he, he know, you know, we turned our life around, nigga. He was definitely on the way, though. He yeah, he's been definitely there. on the way. That's a fact, nigga. Word, man. I mean, well, hold on. I, we definitely well, want to no, hear what uh, Stack got to say. Good, good, Stack, okay. I was going to say, out of curiosity, who's your favorite current college football player? If you had to choose mm. one. Who are you liking right now? Mm. Oh, you're old. Yeah. I'm going with Shador. I'm riding the bandwagon. Okay. Oh, that was a good one. Well, I'm oh. going with that, too. <laughs> I'm going with Shador, I'm going with too. <laughs> yeah, I'm go going with this. Expert. Right. I got to go with the expert, man. That's what I was thinking when everybody was saying Hunter. I was thinking... What if we all pause in for a surprise and the, and the Heisman end up Shador? You pick Hunter yesterday, man. Stay at your pick. No, I'm stay just saying. Pick. I'm just saying. Stay now with your pick, bro. Things happen. No, no, pause, no, week no, to week. no, no. See, just, just, <laughs> things happen. Everything happens week to week. Yeah. Stay with, so I'm going with Hunter. I'm, I am going with Hunter. I'm just throwing that out there for conversation. <laughs> okay. So, but so yeah, so yeah. My 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 MVP is different my from the best player. Expert analysis. Okay, got you. Is that <laughs> okay? It will be <laughs> Hunter, okay. but I'm saying, what if we all pause in for a surprise? That makes sense. Well, well, and Shador ends up winning it all, and it doesn't well, end you, up. Being you know, so what, what, what I'll USC. say is real quick because I don't want to cut it to most time, but. The day before yesterday, you said Collab Williams. What's his name? Collab Caleb, Caleb. Caleb Williams. Then yesterday you said Things Travis change. Hunter. This is not even Things week change. to week. This is day to day. That's how the killer. That's how the BCS changes. It, it hasn't even been a week yet, man. This is crazy. We got Mo here today. That's how the BCS changes. <laughs> it doesn't change from day to day, man. It changes week to week. You He's made, right there. Is that is that true? One game changed the whole ranking. It hasn't right? been a game since you paid me. I know, but I'm I'm ahead of time. <laughs> okay, say I'm ahead of time. <laughs> like. Okay, all right. Say no more, man. I hear that. Okay. Yo, yo, let me. So let me ask you more question. You was telling me about how you was with Mike Tyson, and it was a situation that y'all was talking, and he had came to tears. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, it was a uh, crazy man, and so I got to give context to the to the entire story. Right. Yes, please. So do. back mm -hmm. in like, oh yeah. Yeah, back in 05, uh, we was out in L.A. And, you know, the after party uh, joints be like the studios after hours. So, like, you know, you got to come in with, you know, 10 women. It's every two dudes. And, you know, we go to the party. So I was with a dude uh, who owned a bunch of brothels out in Germany, dude, Prince Marcus. And so we go to the after hours. And the next thing you know, you know, we happen to be standing around. And he knew Mike Tyson. Right. So, like, obviously, if you've ever been around Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson got a huge personality. You know what I'm saying? He just, uh, like, he's, I, I don't know. I, I've been around a bunch of famous people, but he's like, just different, right? So he hit me and he was like, yo, he's like, can you find me some X, right? And I was like, yo, Mike Tyson asked me for some X. Like, I just thought it was crazy, right? So I found myself going through the party. Now, Mike, this is like 2005. So now you on a drug one for Mike? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <It's amazing. laughs> that's why. <laughs> okay, let's make that clear. So, so, yeah, so I'm going Scoring through the party, that. you know, uh, asking people. <laughs> I'm trying to uh, uh, get with everybody to see if they got something, but I ain't got nothing. So we ended up hanging out for the night, and like to me, that was like a big moment. But at the end of the day, like I thought that was just like another moment in Mike Tyson life. So fast forward to 2015, you know. I didn't went to the joint, you know, I didn't get my life in order and, and a bunch of other stuff happened. So I was getting ready to go to my baby shower and my phone kept on going off and I was late and I thought people was basically telling me to come to uh, the baby shower, hurry up and get there. So I keep on ignoring it and just keep on blowing up. So I finally answer it. And the irony is that ESPN had came to town and they were doing a story on my life from the, uh, the 30 for 30 they had done on me. And the next thing you know, uh, the guy named Adam Rittenberg was with me. He was just following me around. And so I pick up my phone and he, it's Mike Tyson on the line. I was like, yo, he was like, man, I need to see you. He was like, I'm in town and I'm like across town at the hotel. So just imagine I got to go to my baby shower and I'm calling my lady like, yo, I'm going to be late. I got to go see Mike Tyson. She's like, man, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. And so I ended up going across I'm, town. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, like, what the hell are you talking about yeah. right now? But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? So, I, so I, I make it across town. And so it was like, it was a surreal moment. So I come through the door 
And when I get in there, like I'm, I'm shocked because I see Pete Rose first. So I know who Pete Rose is. Right. And so I'm looking at Pete Rose and then Mike Tyson across the room. And so he, he rolled up on me. And uh, when he rolled up on me, he like just kind of sit there and looked at me. and was like, yo, bro. He was like, man, you don't realize what you did to my life. And I was like, what's up? And he was like, uh, he was like, man, I was uh, getting ready to have an orgy. He was like, like seven girls. <laughs> he was like, yo, I see you on TV. <laughs> that was crazy. So he like, I see you on TV. And he was like, man, you, he was like, I remember from 2005 when you was fucked up. He was like, so now I see you modern day and you was clean. He said, if you, if your ass can get your life in order, he was like, I know I can get my shit in order. So he was like, man, that was like a turning point where I basically told the girls like to get the fuck away from me. And he like, yo, he was like, that, at that point, like he just decided he wanted to lose weight and just do better for himself. But it was crazy because he started crying and he was just talking about like, yo, I just been through so much shit in my life and I've been so horrible to people. And just now, whatever I have trouble with or whatever I'm struggling with, like I'm seeing you on TV doing that. He was like, man, just encourage me. He was like, I just wanted to tell you. So, you know, me, I'm, you know, I'm 39. You know, I'm uh, Mike Tyson. I grew up watching Mike Tyson. I grew up same thing watching y'all. And so to see him and like just to look at him in that state, it was like humbling, surreal, and also just like um, I don't know, just impactful. You know, so it was it was like cool to see him and hug him and yeah, for you, you know, to be, uh, and look, just be around. Him. I get exactly what you're saying. For you to be motivation for Mike Tyson is yeah. like wow, bro. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy, man. Yeah, that's a dope story, bro. Mo, yes. I, Mo, I got one question for you though. Does Mike know you're saying this? Does Mike know I'm saying this? Yeah. You know, Mike might try yeah, to run he, down. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, <laughs> That's how Mike no, felt before, was, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, be careful with Mike. Yeah. Yo. Yeah, Mike no, said, come I, here, well, let me well, talk to you. <laughs> Why are you telling people you had me crying? <laughs> Mike is one of them yeah. niggas, though. Let me, uh, let, me, yeah. let me ask you real quick. Um... So you had, you had sent me something, and I was trying to find some information on it. Could you tell us more about this um, Jim Harbaugh suspension going on up there in so Michigan? Jim. Yeah, tell me what's going on with that. Yeah, yeah, you know it, it, it's crazy, and it, it all has to do with just how uh, the NCAA mistreats the student athletes in general. So uh, the reason he suspended during like the COVID period, there was a lockout period where coaches couldn't see players, right? And for whatever reason, he was trying to recruit some guys and they went to this restaurant called the Brown Jug and, you know, he was uh, buying them cheeseburgers. And so at the end of the day, my man bought like kids cheeseburgers that he was trying to recruit. Like at the end of the day, it's cheeseburgers and the NCAA found out that he did it. And you would think like in, in, in the world where you make tens of millions and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, that this wouldn't be an issue but they made an issue and they suspended him. And so like, I'm not, you know, the, the old Michigan Ohio state thing is like one thing, but um, like what's fair and how players should be treated is something totally different. And so they suspended my man for literally giving kids cheeseburgers, but the NCAA, they came back and they tried to say, Hey, we're suspending him because he was in contact with players uh, during a period of time that he shouldn't have been. And then the second part of it is that they said that, you know, he was uh, having players practice too much with coaches on the field. So like even as I like I come on here, there's there's a lot of like explaining I'll do just to give you all context of what y'all looking at. Uh, but like the NCAA, a lot of people can't break down like what they see. Uh, but I've been through the system and been through the ringer, so I just I understand all of the nuances, the operations, and stuff that's kind what of flawed. System you, and also, what system you talking about? Just the NCAA oh, and just I how they treat you young that. guys. I thought you meant the other system. My bad. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> 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 my bad. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Get him flipping on Ohio. Now, we Get both, him flipping on Ohio. Nigga, this spot is my man. We went through the same shit. I mean, he knows I've been fucking with him. Nigga, we, so now I'm flipping on Ohio. We ain't from Harlem. Make up your mind, bro. <laughs> Make up your mind, bro. Where are you from? Yeah. I know you're social. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My fault to cut you off because I really was interested in this story. So he's suspended. Cheeseburgers is crazy. It is. It's crazy. It really is, man. They don't want us to have none. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing like. No, just. just, just go ahead, go ahead. I'm listening. No, no, I just said just in general, uh, whether it's the coach or whether it's players, um, this is a free market system. You know, all this money is being made off the backs of players. Um, so be it coaches, be it players, I wish that they would just take the reins off of these people 
and let them operate like professionals just at the collegiate level because that's what it is. Right. Okay. So on the topic of student athletes, a lot of these top D1 schools have low acceptance rates and require high test scores and grades, but that's not easy for many people to achieve. And sometimes it gives athletes the potential to enroll at a school they couldn't have due to their athletic abilities. So what are your thoughts on the way that works? And do you think it's fair? Mm. Well, I benefit off of it, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> all I say is... <laughs> 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 Mo, you didn't yeah. the grades. Myself, like a lot of kids, we get pushed through school because you can play ball, right? Yeah. And so, uh, but but it just shows the exploitation, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't I don't know, that's that's a harsh word, but the exploitation of just young guys. Like the, the reality of it is is that most of the kids that you see on the field are just young dudes from the hood. And academically, they wouldn't be allowed on these university campuses if it was just for academics. But when you get a scholarship, uh, the university allows you to have different uh, enrollment requirements. And so these kids come on campus and, and what ends up happening is, in most cases, you get a lot of kids who are miseducated on purpose, but it's all to keep them eligible to generate the revenue. So I'm saying like, okay, if we understand that the kids are not going to be educated properly, and if we understand that, that like it's a usury situation, like can we put controls and mechanisms in place to ensure that the kids academic level comes up, but then also uh, if there's finances to be had, because this may be the kids um, only chance to earn this level of uh, uh, money because most kids won't go professional. Can we do that? And so that's just always been my, I don't want to say my argument, but just a, a topic of discussion, but yeah, pushing that discussion inside of the NCAA or the system is like disruptive. Gotcha. Yeah. I think, I think when it comes to college sports, I think we really need an audit on every team to see what is the university actually spending on the games? What are they spending on sending the kids from city to city, um, whether it's board, dorm, whatever it is that goes into making sure that child is well. And I think they need to look at the profits and then begin to make a better plan to pay the kids what they're, what they're generating because they're generating a lot of money for those schools. And they always say, but we're giving you this and we're giving you that, but we need to know that number <coughs> in 2023. That's the audit, <laughs> my yeah. man. That's a, I like that. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Let's that's do an audit. Point. That's, yeah. that's a great point. They keep telling you we're spending all this money, but what is the what is the net profits of what right. we're doing? That kind of leads into my next question. That was, that was an excellent point. I, I really like that a lot. Um, what do you think, Mo, about – NIL now as opposed to when you were playing or uh, even in the 90s because, you know, it's a big thing with Reggie Bush uh, uh, last week, a couple weeks ago, how, you know, when he took some bread, they want to take his Heisman Trophy away and they didn't take away Johnny Manziel's shit. So mm. I was wondering what you thought about that because I know you know, but I remember and you know, and I know you know for a fact it was some, and I was pissed off about it about maybe 10 years ago now. It was some kids at Ohio State selling their jersey for about $140 yeah, just to I get their mother's, mother's Mother's Day cards or gifts or whatever it was. They got kicked out of school and the coach got fired behind that shit. And now you got kids making millions of dollars. What's your take <laughs> on that? And do you know the players or, or the coaches I'm talking about in that situation? Yeah. Yeah, I'll name two things. Well, the coach's name is Jim Trussell. Yeah, yeah and the they, young guys, those are expert shit, yeah. murder. Yeah, yeah. Ohio shit, nigga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, nigga. <laughs> no, <laughs> like I, my situation, like you know, I, I my car broke down and I needed a transmission, and from me using a car, that's essentially what kicked everything to get me kicked out of school. And, you know, we had made about $100 million during our championship season, but I couldn't afford a $2,000 transmission. And so, you know, kids wow. kids weren't getting money. Yeah, and so that's that's really how my whole situation just turned out. And then I start lying to the NCAA, and the next thing you know, I'm in the streets doing what I'm doing. Uh, but you fast forward it to now, uh, and even now, like, I don't think people understand. Like, kids can start to get money, but – it, it you need some more guidance with the, the people who are predatory around these kids, right? I sent you an article about the, the defensive tackle from Florida who signed away 15% of his pre-tax earnings 
uh, to a company out of Florida. Look how Florida do you, Mace, right? Yeah, he's yeah, uh, uh, Big uh, League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, you talking yeah. about Big League. No. <laughs> Tell him the whole story so he know. Tell him about no, Florida. I know it. Big, that's Big League. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they raped him, right? So they, they said, they gave him a deal. They said, yo, uh, for, for it's like for 400 grand, sign away 15% of your pre tax NFL earnings for the next 25 years. And I said, That's crazy. Wow. Who would take 400 grand and right. like 15% of your pre tax earnings? Yeah, it's it's, it's nuts. Lot and so shit. when you look at the kid, he, he, he signed a uh, uh, for six million dollars and he owes these people about a million dollars right now. So he's in court. But the, the, the whole NIL landscape needs infrastructure. And a lot of times what happens is it's a lot of these kids who are first year, first, like what, what they call them, um, like first year college students who come from families who haven't been to college before. So you're dealing with a group of uneducated and uninformed people. And they got to, on some level, we just young niggas, right? On some level, right? right. And you're maturing, but you have the vultures, which are uh, either these agent groups or either people who boards of trustees have set around these guys. And what ends up happening is, is most cases, even the NIL money that does come in, a lot of it is unstructured, unguided, and you need some sort of controls in order for these kids to keep the money, you know, after they're done playing or they can leverage it somehow. Um, and I, and, I, and I'll, I'll say this, I, I talk a lot about helping these kids um, negotiate equity in these companies, right? So if you're from Ohio, or if you're from Connecticut or whatever you may be, it makes more sense instead of taking the money, just take equity into the franchise or whatever, whoever is offering you some money, so you can participate longer than your collegiate career. Got you. Very, very informative and educational. They may need to, need to come holler at you about that. Yeah, and I do have to add, it sucks that they're taking advantage of the people who are signing these NIL deals because it was for them to profit and be able to take care of families and stuff. So for you, you know, for sponsors or whatever to sign stuff in like that in their contract, it, it, it sucks, and I hope it doesn't happen. But, you know, all we can do is hope for the best. But we're going to go to break real quick, and we will be <laughs> back with Maurice when we return. Welcome back. When looking at football schedules, some people may say some are more difficult than others. But why is that? And does any specific game come to mind? And do you think they're necessary or not worth it? Oh, so all of this stuff is uh, when you look at a college team schedule, and especially when you look at the your, your bigger the the, uh, the the power five, and that's uh, your your major conferences, they're going to schedule out these uh, I want to say sorry games or games to just get like the the younger players reps and also to pat their uh, wins early in the season before they get in the conference play. And a lot of that stuff that people don't realize that a lot of stuff is tied to bonuses, be it with head coaches, assistant coaches, athletic directors. And there's a financial component that I don't think the average fan really understands that's in all of these collegiate coaches contracts. So if I have to get 10 wins and it's on me to schedule or it's on me to advocate to the, <clears throat> excuse me, to the athletic director as to who we play early on, I'm going to pick somebody who's like an easy shot that I can get over on. Also, if I'm the athletic director and I've gone to the board of trustees and all of my stuff is syndicated around winning or predicated around winning and making sure that we get to a bowl game to then get more TV revenue, to get more merchandise revenue, all of that stuff is the same thing. So all of this stuff is business, but to the average casual fan, they get up into the, um, you know, we, we played this, this no name team and that's like a, a narrative that, you know, fans uh, roll with. But there's always uh, something that ties to business for the universities in, in, in most cases. You're damn right it ties yeah. to business for the university. Everything ties, <laughs> Everything ties, to, business. Everything ties to business for a university. <laughs> you know, like, and, and that's why we got you here. Because you, first of all, I want to say you're very, very knowledgeable on uh, what you got going on. Um, just listening to everything that you're saying. But, you know, just like you were saying, you couldn't afford a uh, two thousand dollar yeah. transmission. I remember Chris Webber like the same shit. Why he left school early? Because mm -hmm. he's like, they're selling my fucking jerseys. They're making all these hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah. and I can't get <laughs> nothing to fucking eat. So I kind of get it, man. 
And it's, it's fucking sad. That's why that audit. Yeah, we that need audit, that audit. That audit's important, man. We need that audit in 2023. <laughs> that audit's important. <laughs> Word. What's the next one, Steph? Okay, so Rich Paul and Stephen A. had some interesting exchanges. Rich Paul calls Cap on Stephen A.'s comments about LeBron. <laughs> Stephen A. said, I got LeBron James as the second best player in the history of basketball, and I said to him myself, you act like that's an insult. I said, get the hell out of my face. Exactly that ain't what, what he I says, Stat. He said, yeah, he said, S-T-F-U. S-T-F-U. Y'all get it. Y'all, see, y'all be trying to get me, but y'all know yeah. how I am. Okay. okay. So he said exactly what I said. I don't want to talk to you no more. And Rich Paul said, anybody in the world who know me, know he not going to say that to me. Thoughts? Ooh. What does he mean by that? No. What, what does he mean by that? Is that an Ohio <laughs> thing too? Yeah, I need to know. Well, he, he a, yeah, he a, he an Ohio boy. <laughs> but Rich, my man, Rich from Cleveland. Uh, Rich ain't about to let Stephen A. tell him to shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? He and, can't uh, let well, him do that. Steve, yeah. <laughs> nah, I told you. I seen we seen the video of Stephen A. boxing. He ain't got no work. <laughs> I, I can't. I, 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 I'm cool with both of these people, man. I, Kim is biased. I, I, I'm not biased. Kim is biased. Rich Paul, my man, and put Stephen A, my Kim man. Kim. Get, you can put the Kim in. Kim's biased. Who am I biased for? Both of them. Then that's not bias, murder. <laughs> <laughs> you're, biased, you're biased away from the truth. What's the truth? You know what you would say, but the, you don't say it. No, realistically, it's a he. It's a he. He said versus he said. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't even a he said she said. said. It's a he versus he said. <laughs> Stephen A. said he said something. Rich Paul said he didn't say it. Stephen A. went back and said he did say it jokingly. Rich Paul said he didn't say it. I'm not taking nobody's side. Who I'm do cool. you believe though? Who do you believe uh, actually is telling the truth? Is it true that Stephen A. said that, or is it true that? <laughs> That Rich Paul said you you didn't say so, that. So if if that's what you call him bias, not making an opinion, uh, answer I'm biased. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm biased. I'm not taking nobody's side. They both my boys. I let them iron that shit out, man. Shout out to both of them. I fuck with both them niggas. So if that's what you meant by yeah. me being biased, then I guess I'm biased, nigga. Yeah. So <laughs> let's put it on pause. Put it on stat for a moment. Do you think? Do you think Rich Paul said that? Yeah. Do you think it was true? That he said that? Yeah, because I, I mean, anybody would. Okay. Because you ain't going to let nobody talk to you like that regardless. And you know, guys, I stay professional, but we're not going to do that. She's from, <laughs> from the Tampa streets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's from the Duval Street. Cassidy with her shoes off. <laughs> Yo, Mo, so real quick, you know, um, we speak. And we got a lot of mutual friends. Let everybody know out there what you've been doing the last few years. Yeah, well, I've got a few things going on. Uh, um, the one that I'm probably most noted for is that I have a, we have about 45 uh, podiatry clinic, clinics, uh, foot and ankle clinics throughout the state of Ohio. We're called Ohio Foot and Ankle Specialists. And basically anything for podiatric needs, everything foot and ankle, uh, we have them throughout the state. <clears throat> we also have a, um, a few vascular surgery centers and for vascular services for people who have uh, lower extremity issues with circulations through their arteries. And essentially we help people to save limbs, which sounds crazy. I uh, also have a drug and alcohol treatment center. I've, I've been running that for like the last eight years uh, where you know we, we probably, I don't know, probably about 600 kids on a weekly basis. Uh, we do mental health, mental health services, psychological, social, and emotional support uh, for kids back in my hometown of Youngstown. And we uh, help adults in recovery People come out of prison, uh, treatment centers, and everything in between, uh, just adults, and we house them for uh, different recovery needs. Uh, a real estate investor, you know, between multifamily commercial properties, got a couple hundred homes. Um, just all in all, just a, just an entrepreneur, businessman. You know, it's other things that I do, but those are the things that people most notably see me for. Uh, and also, I go around and speak. <clears throat> you know, I go to different colleges. I've been doing that for the last 10 to 12 years. Uh, just going to different universities, they bring me in for dudes who used to, I guess, be in my face, you know, things that they can't communicate to the young guys. Um, you know, they, they have me to come in and just speak to them on a level that they feel that the young kids can relate to. Uh, most notably, I've been to uh, UConn. I've, I've been connected to UConn men's basketball program 
like the past four or five years. Uh, and I, I went there, I, I seen them grow through, uh, like being like a, a, a decent team to, you know, obviously winning the championship last year. And I go up there every year and, and, and multiple times a year, but that's essentially what I do uh, in a nutshell. But that's, you know, that's my day to day. Well, look, man, I want to tell you congratulations on your turnaround. You know, I was in Ohio when you was in Ohio. You know, we got some mutual <laughs> friends in Ohio. And nah, seriously, I just want to tell you um, mm -hmm. from becoming, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't know too much about your high school, heard about you. But when you got the college superstar, you know, you got in trouble to where you're at today is amazing. I just want to salute you on that. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Last thing, though, man, what's going on with this Viagra and Cialis <laughs> thing you got going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you ain't, you ain't the only one getting it in Ohio, brother. <laughs> <You know what? laughs> Yo, this is an all-time war wait, right no, here. Hold on now. now wait, wait. What, what are you doing? Wait, oh, wait. Oh, my earpiece done fell out behind yeah. this shit. Hold on. Let me get the mustard back in, man. Let me get back in, so, so, what's going on? You're selling Viagra and Cialis? <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, I got, I got, you know, I keep a raggedy route. I keep, okay. you know, we run our routes here and there. All right, got but, you. But you know, the brothers, you know, the brothers need PEDs in the bedroom. Got you. And so, so when they can't perform, you know, we help them. So you selling drugs still? That's what you do. <laughs> Yo, this can is I, can crazy. I, can I get a solo on camera on my camera, please, Nick? <laughs> if you don't want anything after effects after you take something for your health. All natural, <laughs> tree bark, herbs, straight from Africa without any drugs. Go to pinkhorsepower.net and that's where you won't have any after effects. You don't need Viagra, you don't need Cialis. This is for our people. Yo. Thank you. Yo, this is crazy. Well, we can't make this up. You can't. You heard it here first. We are right here in a pause in the middle of a Viagra. Hey, listen, I'm selling that all natural. Listen, if you want process or you want to go to Dr. CB flow. I'm Dr. CB flow, you know what I'm saying? No disrespect to them. Like, Cam, you ain't no Dr. CB. Call me fuck there. I mean, what I have is all natural. Sebi, no, good. Yeah. I mean, Sebi. Sebi, I say CB. I apologize. Tomato, tomato, no disrespect to the God. Salute and RIP to him. But I'm just saying I'm all natural, baby. Maurice, he he don't know what he's selling to people with that stuff right there. He don't know where it's coming from or nothing. It's straight off the boat, hey. baby, from the motherland. Yeah. I, I, I respect them. They just, you know, they, they, they have performance issues, man. And they, they, they get how they live and, you know, their hey, relationship end up being better and they love me. Hey, man, hey, I'm not knocking it. But let's keep it in the family, man. I'll say I'll send you some packs, baby. I'll send you some yeah, packs. So, yeah, let's keep it in the yeah, family, yeah. baby. Yeah. Hey, look. Yeah. This week, <laughs> hey, look. Yeah. Hey. Hey. Well, you heard look. it here first. Should... That's all the time we have for today. Thank Bert. you, Maurice. Yo, and Mo, thank you all. That, hold on, hold on, real quick. Yeah. I just want to tell you thank you so much because you spent a lot of time educating us today, and we really appreciate it, man. Sorry, Stat. Yeah, no, all good. Much appreciated. Wait, thank and let you me again. stop you. Of course. Go. And thank you, Clorette, for being here and sell it like this. Well, you don't want to be a pup. You don't want to be a player who's unable to perform. That's a football term. You could use it for that. What, pup. you giving them advertisement pup. advice? Put me out of business. <laughs> no, he going to come work. He, he oh, yeah, working yeah, with the team. Yeah, all right, cool. Yeah, say he no working more. with the team. Yeah, yeah, say no more, nigga. All right, cool. Yeah, all right, bet. Okay. Well, <laughs> Thank you all for tuning in. Hold on, one more thing, Stan. <laughs> Hold on, let me do one more, do one more close up. The last thing. Pop. Players. I'm not only the CEO, I'm also a client. <laughs> That's for you, Pop. Yeah. Wow. Thank you all for tuning in to today's episode. As always, it is what it is. <laughs> we 
what you want, nigga. Everything, nigga, super size. Two Big Macs. Like when they doing them two for five.